So I actually started this channel doing machine hunting guides for all the toughest machines in Horizon Zero Dawn, and a few weeks ago I started off the Forbidden West Master Machine Hunting series with a video for Shell Snappers. I'll link that video below if you haven't seen it, but today we're going to continue the series with a guide for Rock Breakers. Everything I'll show you here will be done on very hard difficulty, unless I specifically mention otherwise, and for the live combat demo I'll only use blue rarity gear so you can see how effective the strategy is. We'll also cover the Apex variant and some more advanced tactics using higher level gear as well, so let's dive into it. Okay, so Rock Breakers haven't changed much from Zero Dawn. Their subterranean burrowing behavior is still their defining characteristic, and they've maintained most of the same attacks. They also still have all the same components, including the blaze sacks on their bellies, exhaust port and resource containers on their backs, and four mining claws. However, with some of the new mechanics added in Forbidden West, Rock Breakers are a bit more challenging, so we need a new strategy for hunting them effectively. And real quick, I want to thank Sunny and Plusle over on the Arctic's Discord server for contributing some tips that I've worked into the strategy I'll be showing you guys in this video. For anyone interested in joining us for some in-depth Horizon discussions, I'll leave the Discord link in the description. So perhaps the most significant change relevant to Rock Breakers isn't actually a change to the machine itself, but the fact that you now need their mining claws to upgrade quite a few weapons and outfits. For example, the Seeker Hunter Bow and Tanakh Skirmisher both require multiple mining claws to upgrade. In Zero Dawn, detaching the mining claws was more of an optional tactic to disable the Rock Breakers' ability to burrow. Here in Forbidden West, though, it's more important we make sure to harvest the claws for upgrades, so my strategy is built around that. Our our top priority is removing those claws, not just to make sure we can get them for upgrades, but also because removing all four claws is the only way to permanently disable the Rock Breaker's ability to burrow underground. Once we have the claws removed, we then need a good tactic for dealing damage to finish the Rock Breaker off. Taking a look at their elemental weaknesses, we can see that Rock Breakers are weak to both Frost and Shock, which is great because these are arguably the most powerful elements in the game. So the ideal approach here would be to Shock the Rock Breaker, which immobilizes it for 15 seconds and makes it very easy to remove the claws. Unfortunately, the green and blue rarity shock weapons aren't great, and I really want to give you guys a strategy that works without requiring high level gear like the Lightning Hunter Bow or Death Seeker. If you are further along and you've got one of those bows, or a Shredder Gauntlet with shock shredders like the Thunderbolt or Ancestor's Return, then you should totally use those to stun the Rock Breaker. But if you don't have any of those, don't worry. The strategy we'll use here doesn't rely on them. Because we don't have a good way to immobilize the Rock Breaker with a shock, our first step will be to focus on the claws directly. To remove them quickly, you'll want to use Tear Precision Arrows, which are found on two bows, the blue cleaving sharp shot bow and the purple glow blast. I'll be using the fully upgraded blue cleaving sharp shot bow with a couple of basic tear coils on it. Now yes, if you have something like the death seeker or even an upgraded purple hunter bow, a triple notch of advanced hunter arrows can deal more tear damage. And if you have access to those, you should totally use them. But remember, we want this strategy to be effective as early as possible, so I'll primarily be using tear precision arrows to remove the claws. As for my outfit, I'll be using the Nora Sentinel at level 4 with a couple of melee defense weaves on it. So after we've removed the Rock Breaker's Claws with Terra Precision Arrows, we'll want to exploit its weakness to Frost. To do that, I'll use a fully upgraded Frost Hunter Bow with a couple of basic Frost Coils on it. Alternatively, you could use the Ice Fire Blast Sling if your Frost Arrows aren't very strong. Or if you have a higher rarity weapon like the Purple Seeker or Legendary Sun Scourge Hunter Bow, of course you'd want to use that. Basically, once the Rock Breaker can't burrow anymore, get it frozen however you'd like. Now, for dealing damage, you have several options with all the new weapon types. My preferred method is to simply use Advanced Hunter Arrows since they're cheap to craft. I'll be using the Sun Touched Hunter Bow upgraded to level 4 and outfitted with a couple of impact damage coils. I'll also typically end up launching off a few brace shots using my Sharp Shot Bow. I'd also recommend Bolt Blasters, Warrior Bows, Spike Throwers, Blast Slings, or Shredder Gauntlets for dealing damage once the Rock Breaker is frozen. It really just comes down to preference, although we'll discuss a few specific use cases for some of those weapons in a minute. Regardless of your choice of weapon, your primary target for dealing damage should be the Rock Breaker's Exhaust Port, which is an indestructible weak point. This means we can hit it as many times as we want to deal increase damage without destroying it. That being said, the Rock Breaker will only stay frozen for 30 seconds, so you shouldn't waste time trying to line up perfect shots. While frozen, it's vulnerable anywhere on its body, so it's more important to just hit it as much as possible than it is to line up a few perfect shots. Once it does become unfrozen, you should immediately switch back to freezing it. Repeat this cycle of freezing and dealing damage a few times and you'll have the Rock Breaker down before you know it. Now let's rewind for a second, because we blew past one of the most important parts of hunting Rock Breakers, dealing with their subterranean attacks. This is probably the most frustrating part of dealing with rock breakers. My advice here is to keep an eye out for the flashing red and yellow alert indicator. Most of the time, this symbol will appear just before the rock breaker surfaces, and if you dodge right after seeing it, you'll be able to avoid taking damage. Speaking of dodging, I would highly encourage you to master what I call the slide dodge. Without the dodge prowess skill we had in Zero Dawn, a regular dodge just doesn't cut it anymore for big machines that can cause the new tremor mechanic, which is basically a mini earthquake that can stagger you and reduce mobility. The slide dodge is exactly what it 
it sounds like. Instead of dodging, you first slide to avoid the attack and then throw a dodge roll in at the end. This combo allows you to cover more ground and gives you additional invincibility frames that can help you avoid being affected by tremors. Getting used to this new way of dodging and timing it correctly based on the alert icon takes some practice, so no worries if you're not getting it right away. I promise if you put a little practice time in, you'll get the hang of it. Alternatively, you could also jump up on the rock outcroppings to try to avoid the rock breakers underground attacks, but this also isn't 100% safe. Okay, so let's run through the full strategy. First, we want to sneak up and land a tear precision arrow on one of the rock breakers claws. I prefer to focus on one of the back claws with this free shot because it will be hard to get a good angle on these during the fight. And remember, the rock breaker can detect your footsteps from very far away, so you'll need to play it a bit stealthy to get this first shot in. Now, on harder difficulty levels, a single arrow won't be enough to remove a claw. We'd really like to get at least one claw removed right off the bat, so there's a couple of things you can do here. First, if you have better tear or component tear coils, you should totally add those to your sharp shot bow. You could also consider using the double notch skill that will let you fire two tear precision arrows at once. Or, my preferred method is to use the part breaker valor search, which boosts tear to components by 25, 50, or 85% depending on what level you have it upgraded to. I also like part breaker because it boosts damage delta components and weak spots by the same amount, which will come in handy later in the fight. Anyway, your goal here is to make your first shot deal as much tear damage as possible to hopefully remove a claw, because the rock breaker will immediately dive underground as soon as it detects you. After it dives underground, we basically need to wait until it fully surfaces again to focus on the other claws. While it's down, keep moving and use the slide dodge to avoid its subterranean attacks. Once it fully resurfaces, be ready to immediately land more tear precision arrows on its claws. Repeat this until you have all the claws removed, at which point things get much easier. Without claws, the rock breaker will be stuck above ground, and so long as you keep some distance from it, its lunging attacks will be relatively easy to avoid. Again, I recommend using the slide dodge combo to avoid these. Now your priority is simply dealing damage to finish the rock breaker off. This is where we employ our freeze and damage tactic. Repeat the cycle of freezing and damaging the rock breaker a few times and you'll have the rock breaker down before you know it. Remember to keep moving and try to land shots on the exhaust port whenever possible. Okay, I know that's a lot to wrap your head around, so let's put it all together and take a look at the live combat. All right guys, so let me just show you real quick that I'm on very hard difficulty and my aim assist is on default. Bottom left, I've got some health potions, healing potions, uh, stamina potions, and cleansing potions. The cleansing potions are to get rid of the crush state in case we get crushed by the rock breaker and start taking damage over time. Um, cleansing potions will clear that and any other status effect. In case you haven't been using them, those are pretty key. I'm going to triple notch three advanced hunter arrows and three frost arrows using the triple notch skill. And then I also just like to scan them and tag up all the components, especially so we can see the claws. And then I'm going to go ahead and trigger the part breaker valor surge. And we will land a tear precision arrow on this back claw here. Tear that off. And as soon as he detects us, he's going to go underground, keeping an eye out for that alert symbol and then sliding and dodging to get out of the way. There it is, slide and dodge. So my, um, my tear precision arrows are actually high enough modded to tear or upgraded high enough that I don't need the Valor Surge as long as I overdraw them here. But it just all depends on how much tear you have. Of course, you could also use like the Death Seeker or a higher level bow that has really good tear on its hard point arrows or its advanced hunter arrows. But you can see if I overdraw these here, I'll show you here in a second. If I overdraw them, Hold still. There we go. Then we'll be able to tear off a claw in one shot. There we think we might have got the last one there. So when he comes out, oh no, he's still got one claw in the front. So we'll get that one off. Actually, we stunned him there, which is cool. But I will just start freezing him now. And I might as well land the freezes on this exhaust port to deal a little bit extra damage. Overdrawing does increase elemental damage buildup. So um, since the rock breaker is like so slow out of the ground, I recommend doing that with a triple notch to kind of use your draw time most efficiently. And then we're going to try and just land as much damage as we can on him, hitting the exhaust port. You could also hit these resource canisters if you want to, but I find they're a little bit difficult to hit, and they typically don't contain very good resources, so I don't know that it's really worth focusing on those. 
Um, so I'm going to get ready to start freezing them again. And I'll show you guys the bolt blaster here in a second. This time. So this is what I mean. He's so slow, you might as well overdraw and just save yourself a little bit of ammo. So the other thing you can do is if you have sustained burst and a bolt blaster, you can use that weapon technique. Oh, see, I'm out of stamina, so I'll just take a stamina potion so we can see this. But you can use this to really melt off a lot of a machine's um, HP. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of getting lucky with the invincibility frames there, but... We'll go back to advanced hunter arrows and just start dealing damage. You can just hit him anywhere in the body while he's frozen to deal a pretty good amount of damage too. So we will freeze him up one more time. And I will hit this exhaust port. I think I'll finish him off with a nice brace shot for us. I have to build my stamina. So we'll just need another stamina potion there. I wouldn't typically use stamina potions, but just to make the video good. There we go. As you guys can see, getting those claws removed is key for handling rock breakers. Once they're stuck above ground, they really aren't too much trouble. The trick is getting all four claws off. Now, I do want to mention that if you're playing on story, easy, or normal difficulty, I would highly recommend you get the shock bolt blaster from Scalding Spear and unlock the sustained burst weapon technique. By using these in combination, you can actually shock the rock breaker pretty easily, which makes removing the claws a breeze. Now, let's touch on some advanced tactics and tactics for higher difficulty levels and the Apex variant. First off, once you have a good shock weapon, you'll want to shock the rock breaker before removing the claws, like we just saw with the shock bolt blaster on normal difficulty. It's just going to require something like the lightning hunter bow or thunderbolt shredder gauntlet if you're playing on hard or very hard. As for dealing damage while the rock breaker is frozen, using the sustained burst or spread blast weapon techniques on a bolt blaster is a great option. Another interesting option is to use a spike thrower with drill spikes, like the scalding or spine thorn. Drill spikes deal damage over time, so you can land a bunch of them on the frozen rock breaker to start knocking down its health. It's also pretty fun to land drill spikes on the exhaust port to deal even more damage. Keep in mind that drill spikes will deal damage even while the rock breaker is underground. It's also smart to put knockdown power coils on a spike thrower to give the drill spikes a good chance at triggering a knockdown, which will give you an easy opportunity to remove claws. I'd also recommend you consider using a shredder gauntlet with either piercing or advanced shredders to deal damage. Shredders are great because if you can get the hang of catching them, you can reuse the same shredder ammo and conserve a lot of resources. Finally, I want to remind you guys that if you do happen to get crushed by a rock breaker, you can clear the crush status effect by drinking a cleansing potion, which you'll definitely want to do because you'll continue to take damage over time while crushed. Okay, so let's talk about those Apex variants. The Apex rock breaker is resistant to shock and frost, but we can still use our strategy as long as we add in one extra step. By drenching the rock breaker with purge water, we can remove its resistance to frost and shock, which will allow us to use the same strategies we employed for the normal variant. The best purge water weapons are the lightning hunter bow and corrosive blast sling, but even something like the cloud burst blast sling that I'm using here will work just fine. You'll just need to remember to drench the rock breaker before you freeze or shock it each time. Unless of course you have a legendary like the Death Seeker or Sun Scourge Hunter Bows that will let you shock or freeze even an Apex variant directly. Remember the Apex variant has a lot more health and is more powerful, so you'll be in for a longer fight with them. Alright guys, that's my master machine hunting guide for rock breakers. As we discussed, those mining claws are pretty important for gear upgrades, so I hope I've helped you master rock breaker hunting. If you have a favorite strategy for dealing with rock breakers, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video or if you learned something new, leaving a like really does help small channels like mine. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.